UNESCO chairs. We have in our midst the UNESCO chair for artificial intelligence. And we have in our midst the UNESCO chair for analytics and data science, who have joined us today for this very special and momentous launch. Um, I would like to first introduce Professor John Shaw Taylor to you. He is the UNESCO chair in artificial intelligence. He's a professor at the University College London. He's also the founding director of the Center of Computational Statistics and Machine Learning at UCL. And he's also the lead for ITSCHKAI, which is the International Research Center of Artificial Intelligence under the auspices of UNESCO in Slovenia. He researches statistical learning theory, um, kernel methods, and his contributions range from anything like neural networks to pattern recognition and many more. Um, John led a European initiative called Pascal. It was, um, in my mind and in many people's minds, instrumental to equalize the playing field between Europe and the US um, in machine learning in terms of conference publications. Pascal stands for Pattern Analysis and Statistical Modeling um, and Computational Learning. Uh, when I was a student, I read a book uh, when I was uh, in South Africa in Pretoria. And the book was called Kernel Methods for Pattern Analysis. It's all about support vector machines. And the author of that book is John. So it's really special to have him here. Uh, the second distinguished guest that I would like to introduce to you is Professor Maria Fasli. She is the UNESCO Chair of Analytics and Data Science, and she's a professor at the University of Essex. She's also the founding director of the Institute for Analysis and Data Sciences, and she's the director of the ESRC Business and Local Government School uh, Center. She's Greek, she was born in Greek, and she obtained a PhD at the University of Essex. She's held numerous positions, um, and she's awarded the UNESCO Chair in 2016. And the aim of her chair in data science um, and analytics is to work with and find a way to foster collaboration with international collaborators to really develop research capacity in data analytics and data science. She's also the co-author of a book called Agent Technology for E-Commerce. So it's a great privilege for me to welcome two authors, very esteemed authors, and two UNESCO chairs and two wonderful people to the stage. They are going to tell you why a journal of AI for sustainable development. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a true pleasure uh, to be here in Musenberg celebrating the 20th anniversary of uh, AIMS. This is not my first visit. I think this is visit number three or four. But it's a true pleasure to be here simply because we are seeing the outcome of really focused effort to support the development of skills in mathematics and statistics here in Africa, and it's truly, truly awesome. So uh, I'm Maria Fasli. I'm not sure I fully recognize the description that uh, Ulrich gave. It's um, actually quite interesting when people uh, talk about yourself and um, they, they talk about your CV. I can assure you I'm, I'm just Maria. Despite all the director titles, just call me Maria. So John and I are going to be doing a little bit of a double act to tell you a little bit about what we're trying to do and hopefully how we can bring you together. But uh, I'm not going to repeat that. I just want to provide you with a little bit of the context of what we're trying to do. Both John and I work under the auspices of UNESCO. UNESCO is the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. And it was founded after the Second World War on the 16th of November in an effort to try and support uh, uh, world uh, peace and security. Their headquarters are based in Paris, but actually you have commissions, national commissions all over the world in all the participating countries in, the, in, in, in UNESCO. So there's, there's one in uh, South Africa uh, as well. So what does UNESCO do? 
UNESCO helps promote, as I said, peace and, and security, but the way they do it is by supporting member states through policy briefs, through, uh, through undertaking some work, through putting initiatives in place, making sure that um, member states understand, for instance, the importance of education. This has a really uh, high priority in UNESCO's uh, agenda. And they also have, they also do declarations and recommendations. And I just wanna highlight one of the recommendations uh, that will be of relevance to this audience, which is the recommendation on the ethics of AI, which was supported unanimously and adopted in uh, the UNESCO Assembly in November 2021. And John was part of the, of the group that put that recommendation uh, together. And then the way it works, member states take these recommendations and see how they can apply them within their own uh, country uh, context. But UNESCO has other initiatives that help promote uh, uh, the, the education agenda and the research agenda. And I just wanna highlight some. So there are 81 institutes and centers under the auspices of UNESCO. Uh, these are typically called category two centers. These are across uh, 58 countries, and John is leading the first one in AI, which has its bases in Slovenia. There are also 950, maybe more now, um, UNESCO chairs. So these are academics like John and myself, and uh, the way this works is we provide our expertise to UNESCO, or we work with UNESCO, but actually we bring others on the table, so we, we create collaborations across the world using our expertise to make sure that we promote the UNESCO agenda, we make sure that we develop research capacity, skills, expertise, and we support the UNESCO objectives across, uh, across the world. So we act as domain experts and we, uh, work with UNESCO in this way. Okay, um, so I'm gonna take over and just say a few words about the um, IRCAI Center, which is the center that uh, uh, was mentioned that I direct, which is based actually in Ljubljana in Slovenia. Um, it was uh, actually approved by uh, the UNESCO Assembly. Again, it has to be unanimously approved in order to be, um, uh, to be accepted. So all 192 UNESCO member states uh, approved this in uh, 2019. Uh, but it was actually, because of COVID, it was delayed and was, we actually had a launch uh, only in 2021, um, which was attended by uh, uh, participants from uh, over 100 countries. Um, it's funded mainly by the government of, the, of Slovenia. And as I said, it had its headquarters in Ljubljana at the Josef Stefan Institute. So we aim to provide a kind of uh, ecosystem for research institutions, companies, startups, and nonprofit uh, players in order to uh, enhance the development of uh, the application of AI to sustainable development, but also with a focus on education about AI um, and the ethical questions around AI, um, uh, which I think are you know, becoming more and more a focus of interest, and uh, we'll speak more about that uh, in a moment. But we have a number, of, uh, you know, a range of projects, and on the right-hand side here, oh, the, sorry, uh, could we move the slide forward? Sorry, I'm, I'm looking yeah. at this. Yeah. Okay. I have to move this, yeah. right, right, yeah, okay, sorry. Well, right. I can play your Wrong. <laughs> there we are. So there's, uh, this was one of the initiatives we had, which was a, a global competition for uh, innovative solutions from companies to uh, sustainable development challenges. We called it the Top 100 Report. Uh, we've done it now uh, uh, two years running, uh, and we uh, launched the, both of those at the United Nations. So it's kind of trying to promote uh, work that is going on in this area, particularly from you know startup companies. Uh, we're also involved in a number of EU projects which are r relevant to the type of work that we're interested in, RIDO, Reliable AI and Data Optimization, um, ILIAS, the European Lighthouse for, of AI for Sustainability, and AI for Gov, Trusted AI for Transparent Public Governance, Fostering Democratic Values. So these are the kind of uh, projects that are funded within the European Union, but we are always trying to ensure 
broader uh, involvement of third party countries uh, in activities. So for example, we'll be uh, hosting a workshop uh, in uh, Sweden in June, at which we are uh, encouraging uh, and will be funding participation from other parts of the, uh, of the globe. So uh, moving forward, I'm gonna hand over. Yeah. So um, Ulrich already mentioned the kind of inception. When was it that we, we started thinking about some of the things that we are all here to talk about today? So in 2018, there was a workshop in Nairobi that brought together a number of people from across the world, actually, to talk about how is it that we can support the development of expertise, skills here in Africa in data science and artificial uh, intelligence. And what we wanted to create following on from that is a network that would be truly encompassing, would be bringing people together. It would be, if you like, from the, the bottom up, from the ground up, uh, in an effort to coordinate work in this, in this area. Now, AI, just because people talk about it nowadays, is not new. Uh, some of us have been in this space for a while, and we're not gonna tell you how long, uh, for how long, because then you can guess our age, and I don't like that. <laughs> Uh, but the idea was to create this network that will be able to facilitate collaborative work across countries, across continents, but not just bring uh, uh, academia together, but actually extend this network to uh, policy makers, to business, to industry, because this has to be uh, an interdisciplinary effort if we are to make uh, progress in this space. So some of us came together um, and uh, decided that we really needed to formalize arrangements for this to some extent, so that there is an entity that can take these, these efforts forward. So we developed Nexus, the proposal for Nexus, this interdisciplinary network, which is the network for AI, knowledge, and sustainable development. And we have a set uh, of core partners led by uh, IRCAI, um, uh, we, we, we've got um, a number of partners from across the world, as you can see, uh, from the US, from Spain, uh, from the UK, uh, and Brazil. But uh, this is a truly collaborative and international uh, effort. It was launched in 2022 as part of the Science, Technology, and Innovation 2022 uh, Forum at the time. And since this month, we have formally 50 partners and with another 20 relationships developing. Now, there isn't a fee to join. You can even join as an individual. Uh, there are lots of opportunities to get involved and we will tell you a little bit more about that uh, towards the end. But it's very important to understand that this is not driven from the, the top but it's driven from the bottom. So we really like to invite people to be part of this collaborative uh, effort and actually join and, and help us uh, develop this work uh, further. One of the things that we have done is we've tried to, where possible, have meetings in person like this one. So that's why uh, John and myself are here. But we had one in, in Daba. Uh, last year in Ghana in 2023. So it was a, a workshop that included uh, papers and presentations. So lots of different colleagues from across Africa and the world came together uh, and, and, it, and it was a very nice event which has led to one of the things that we are here to present um, to you. So um, the whole idea is to try and make sure that AI is used properly for sustainable development and the sustainable development goals in particular. And as I said, AI is not new. We have seen a lot of progress in the last few years because of computational power, because of data, because uh, we have now cheap storage. But there's a lot of uh, potential to use AI technologies to, for instance, monitor the implementation of the sustainable development goals, but you can also use AI technologies to directly support the 17 sustainable development goals, which we are meant to be making progress by 2030, so we don't have a lot of time. However, though there's the potential there, there's also uh, risks, 
and there has already been quite a lot of work uh, in this space, at least for, uh, for a start, looking at the potential of AI to support the sustainable development progress and make a positive uh, difference. And what you see on this slide is some of this work against uh, the 17 sustainable development goals that have been divided into three categories, economy, society, and the environment. So you can see the positives. Uh, I hope you can, well, as much as you can really, uh, read this uh, spidergram. Uh, but there's also, as I said, the potential to harm, to uh, have negative consequences on the sustainable development uh, goals. And there are risks with AI and how you are, how you are deploying it. So we want to make sure that this actually works for everyone across the world, and that's what we are here to do. So we're here to launch this journal. As I say, it came out of the, uh, as was mentioned, out of the discussions within the Nexus Network, uh, concretely in the meeting at, in, in Kenya, um, the idea of creating a journal. Um, and the, uh, the idea is that this should aim to be interdisciplinary, um, bringing together obviously AI experts, but also domain experts for different areas of sustainable development. Um, so we're launching it today uh, at the 20th anniversary of AIMS in Cape Town. Um, and the idea is to uh, report the use of AI in addressing sustainable development uh, goals, possibly measuring sustainable development challenges. Uh, these will be technical papers. They will be innovative in terms of the use of AI, but also potentially in AI techniques being developed for those applications. But we will also be looking at presenting discussions of ethical considerations and policy proposals concerning AI. So these will be called position papers. Um, and the importance of linking both the technical and the, if you like, policy or ethical dimensions, we believe is, is, is really formative in thinking around this new journal. Um, so the, some of the basic facts, is this me? Yeah, yeah. okay. So it's a pioneering open access journal um, in the sense that in two respects. Firstly, it's going to be open for free to everybody to read the papers. But furthermore, it's going to be open for free for those who wish to publish. There will be no publication charges. Um, this is arranged. The, the um, editor will be, the, the, sorry, the publisher, the editor will be uh, Ames in Cape Town. Um, and the Contribution types, as I mentioned, will be technical papers, position papers, potentially also review papers. Uh, and we are really aiming for this to become the go-to journal for work in this area. Um, our inaugural special issue uh, will be of position papers. Uh, it's coming out of a workshop that was co-organized with Vanessa Neurock, the UNESCO chair on the ethics of the artificial and the uh, Living, um, which was held in Nice uh, last year uh, on the topic of artificial intelligence and education for democracy. Um, sorry, I should click that, thank you. Um, so this will be the inaugural special issue. Well, it actually will be a, a collection uh, of papers arising from that, uh, that workshop, and we will be releasing the first uh, couple of papers and forward uh, we're aiming for April the 15th when they will be released, and then following that every two weeks an additional two papers through till we have the complete collection. Um, another, I think, unique feature will be that it will be multilingual by design. Uh, every paper has the option to include versions in different languages, and this first special issue will be presented in both English and French. Uh, but the option to add other languages uh, is always there, as many as the authors are happy or would like to add. Uh, and we are aiming to have 
the main paper be in the language of the author, and then the additional will be other languages that will be uh, available to those who wish to read in different languages. So we're trying to really have this be accessible in all respects, accessible in terms of anyone can view, but also accessible in terms of uh, different languages. And I think the other aspect, and this relates to UNESCO as a cultural organization, accessible to different cultures. We want this to be reflecting different experiences of sustainability in different regions. And that's why we are so very happy that Ames has agreed to take on the editorship of this journal uh, and lead from the front, as it were, in terms of setting the agenda of how to uh, approach sustainability in an inclusive way for the whole globe, not from uh, different, let's say, bias perspectives that we may have uh, with the domination of certain regions in the development of AI uh, companies. So I think that is really important that, that we are seeing this as a vehicle for promoting uh, what we might call a, a very bottom-up and inclusive approach to AI and the ethics of AI and its application to sustainability. Uh, so, sorry, that was the multilingual by design. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay, is this is me as well? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, just to say the publisher is the African Institute of Mathematical Sciences. Ulrich is the editor-in-chief. Um, uh, together with a board uh, in involving uh, Maria and myself and uh, Manu and Nuria. Uh, as I said, we mentioned already the one uh, special issue, but we will have uh, in process also uh, a special issue from the workshop that we mentioned uh, that happened at the Deep Learning in Darbo in 2023 and the first international conference on the advancement of artificial intelligence in African context. So these are special issues that are in preparation. And again, we, we will uh, keep people informed about the uh, progress on those. This is just a, a, a slide to give you a, a kind of a little bit of an impression of the way we think that this topic will be growing internationally. Uh, this uh, up to, this is actually a little out of date, but this has uh, real data up to 2020, and you can see a very significant growth, and then a projection of where we might see the uh, development of AI and sustainable development uh, in the future, uh, and part of that future has already happened, so we should have more accurate information, but unfortunately we didn't manage to collect it in time. But I, th we, I am very confident this will be a very exciting and popular topic that we'll see uh, more uh, interest and development. So we believe this journal has the potential to become a leading light in this uh, topic of research. Uh, so the aim will be for the new journal to attract at least 10% of the papers in this area, uh, pushing towards 150 papers a year annually. But I think, you know, that's, I think we can, we can do better than that as well. So, um, what we want to do is make sure that we create a new journal that is from the community for the community. This is not John or my journal or Ulrich's journal. This should be all of our journal. And we're not trying to create an elitist product or journal. We know there are lots of journals that publish. They require fees. We want to make sure that we open up this to the community, we bring people together, and actually we provide the opportunity to a, a very diverse audience to publish their work. So you could be coming from industry, you could be a PGR student, you could be a master's student or an academic, and you want to publish your work on AI related to sustainable development, this is the vehicle. We want this to be the go-to destination where everyone can read papers. And if you're a policymaker and you want to find out what's happening in Africa that you can learn from, or what's happening in South America or what's happening in Europe, there is a place that you can go and you can, uh, you can find relevant papers. 
For us, it's really important that this is multi-stakeholder, but it's also very interdisciplinary. We truly believe that we cannot make progress in AI unless we bring different voices on the table together. This is not about just developing the technologies. This is about bringing people from sociology, from hum the human rights perspective, from economics, from business, to try and understand how will these technologies develop in the future and how will our society evolve because these are questions that we are now starting to grapple with, but we don't understand the full, fully yet the consequences that AI will have on us. So we want you to get involved. You can help us develop the portal. If you have the skills, please come and join. Ulrich is smiling. Um, you can submit your papers. You can become reviewers. You can join the editorial reviewing team. You can suggest special issues. You can work with us, you can be part of the Nexus network, you can help us create new events, bring the community together. Please don't see this as something that is being developed and doesn't affect you. We wanna make sure we bring as many people as possible uh, on the table and uh, ensure that your, all of your voices are actually heard and that's what we are here to do to today. So if you like, this is a call to arms Please join us in this truly collaborative effort. It doesn't mean that we are doing everything right. We are open to feedback. We are open to suggestions. And we truly hope that this is a platform and we are using the 20th celebration for AIMS to launch this journal because we want you to be part of this very exciting journey that we are starting to charter, but we don't know all the answers. And that's important. You can help us all figure out the answers. Great, and finally, just to sort of formally initiate the journal, I'm going to hand over a uh, copy of the first paper that will appear uh, to Ulrich as the editor-in-chief. <laughs> I just want to say a few words. Um, this is typeset in LaTeX with a special LaTeX um, style sheet that was designed for the journal. And it is real. We're holding it in our hands. <laughs> Paper number one. Uh, paper number one is called Human Centric AI and Education. Three of our students have already read the paper. Um, the DOE is empty because it's not yet online. This is uh, in the oven. Um, but it's real. <laughs> and can I, can I pay special tribute to Ulrich and his team because they've been amazing in putting this together. You have no idea how much effort it takes, even to create that one laminated page, I can assure you. So this is the product of love, sweat, and tears, if, I'm, if I can say. <laughs> but it's a culmination of um, months of effort that could not have been done without the very, very material help and support and leadership from AIM. So thank you very much. Yeah, my, thank you.